The Cranky Geek WebRTC Spring 2021 show is possible thanks to our sponsors. Google, Agora, Element, Dolby I.O., Twilio, and Ring Central. See the links in the description for more information. All right, welcome back, everyone. Um, certainly uh, a, a big topic is mobile. Uh, and then we've actually had whole uh, had a whole event almost dedicated to uh, to mobile. Uh, it, it certainly hasn't gone away. I think one of the more interesting aspects of that now is how's mo- how the mobile web has evolved uh, itself, right? So do you actually even need a, a, a native mobile application anymore? Can you get away with a mobile web? So to talk about that topic, uh, we have a uh, you know one of our sponsors, uh, Toyo and, and Donald Toomey. Uh, Donald, I'll let you uh, take it away. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks, Sahi, Chad, Chris, for having me on the show. Uh, delighted to be here. Uh, Long time watcher. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about best practices for developing WebRTC applications on mobile browsers. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about the mobile browser growth that we've seen, uh, some of the challenges with mobile browsers, best practices, uh, simple diagnostics SDK, and then some final thoughts. So in the old days, and by the old days, I mean pre-pandemic, the traffic on our platform was dominated by desktop browsers and iOS and Android native applications. Uh, mobile uh, browser usage, you know, didn't even register. Um, but as the pandemic hit and we, you know, we saw a tremendous growth, uh, we also saw growth in support tickets. And uh, one of the interesting aspects was the number of people that were trying to use uh, mobile web. And, and in particular, the types of problems that they were encountering. So we, we spent quite a bit of time last year helping developers uh, with uh, issues on, on mobile browsers. And, and that's kind of where we're coming from with this talk. Uh, so, you know, if we kind of fast forward to today, uh, we see that Chrome still dominates the, the traffic on our platform. So this is uh, looking back over the last 30 days. Uh, but you can see like the number two browser uh, on our list is, is mobile Safari. And then further down the line, we see uh, Chrome on mobile. And if we add those two together, and, and there's a few other smaller ones, we, we see about 11% of traffic on our platform is now mobile browsers. And, and that's, that's traffic on, like, for Twilio video. Yeah, Twilio right. video. And I guess you know, there's, there's a substantial figure there. So. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And, and, like, it, it's grown from, from tiny, tiny numbers. Uh, so if we drill in one level deeper, uh, you'll see that mobile Safari dominates uh, at roughly 64%. Uh, Chrome on mobile is, is lower at 26%. And then we have Samsung, Firefox, and, and a few others as well at, at smaller numbers. Uh, another interesting aspect is the, the number of VPA codec usage, uh, very high uh, in relation to H.264. Uh, but we still see some you know, H.264 uh, traffic as well. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. OK. So, you know, why, why use mobile browser versus mobile app, right? With a mobile app, uh, you know, you're, you're going to imagine it's going to be more performant. Uh, you get to decide which, which WebRTC version to use. You can patch it. You can add in, you know, support for extra hardware codecs if you want. Uh, but the real reason to use mobile browsers is it's a low friction way for consumers uh, to get onto video chat, especially for infrequent interaction. Um, you know, you'd be surprised the number of people that have trouble installing mobile applications. So, you know, with a mobile browser, it's like one click and then you're in video chat. And, you know, I think we've seen over the last few years that the, the WebRTC implementation of mobile browsers has, you know, become very consistent. Uh, you can rely on it mostly. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. And then I think the other interesting trend is, is the use of appointment reminders by businesses, uh, like either SMS or email. And if you have a link to the, the video chat application in that, then it, it's really simple for people just to click and go. So like, what are the ch- top challenges that we see with mobile browsers? Uh, the first one is ownership of the camera and microphone, right? At, at any particular time, like who has the ownership and then the kinds of problems that can cause, right? So symptoms is, you know, participant cannot see or hear uh, the mobile participant. And typically, the causes are another application or tab has ownership of the camera or microphone. So maybe you were watching YouTube in the background and then decided to go on to video call. Uh, you know, get user media successful even when your microphone or camera are reserved by another tab or application. So surprise, you thought you had it, but really you don't. 
uh, and then you know get user media fails uh, or you know Bluetooth issues. I think everybody's had that problem. Uh, the next one is uh, to do with backgrounding. So you're on your video call and then you get an incoming phone call or another video call. Um, so the symptoms, the mobile participant is frozen. You know, you're chatting away and suddenly they, they stop and, and you're kind of, you're calling, hey, hey, you're there, you're there. Uh, and then maybe they come back, but you can't hear them after they come back. Uh, so typical causes, you know, the incoming call or the media app has acquired the microphone or camera. Uh, or the user is accidentally background of the app during the video call as well. You know, that, that happens, especially with uh, some of the older folks. Uh, next one is, is just the general robustness of the browser media engine. Uh, so in general, you know, everything's working, but you see these edge cases of, of audio or video um, problems. Uh, you see some video artifacts. Uh, typical causes, you know, a new operating system or browser version introduces a regression, uh, mostly around audio. Uh, and then, you know, each each video application and even the, the CPaaS vendors, you know, will use the browser APIs in a slightly different way or the timing will be different. Uh, so that results in like some applications working fine and then others having problems. Uh, and then, of course, there's, there's hardware codec issues, uh, mostly yeah. H.264, uh, but even VPH. Uh, so then last one, um, just general WebRTC support. Uh, so get user media maybe fails. Or, you know, it, again, random incompatibilities and, and disconnects. Uh, so typical causes, the, the web view on the device doesn't support WebRTC, uh, or the browser has some version of WebRTC, but it's not decent. So let, let's chat uh, about best practices. So, you know, this is kind of the meat of the discussion. Um, this one, you know, may seem obvious, uh, but a lot of developers have a kind of allergic reaction to, to adding these kind of checks to their application. And then, you know, I've talked to customers where they're having a lot of problems uh, and I ask them, do you do any kind of pre-call testing? Uh, and they say no, because they don't want uh, to introduce friction to their users. Uh, yeah. But I believe this can be done. Are they worried that people will abandon the call or give up? You know, yeah, but, but they... They, they want to get people like into the, you know, the chat experience as quickly as possible, okay. right? And, and this is kind of like a, you know, nuisance, so to speak. Uh, but, you know, I think you, you can develop these, um, you know, waiting rooms or, or pre-call areas that, that are kind of low friction. Um, and, you know, at the very least, you want to be able to see yourself, right, before you, you get into the call. Um, and then, you know, a little microphone um, indicator as well. So, you know, these, these are low friction ways with, with huge, huge benefits. Uh, next item is around background and foreground event handling. So, so this one can be kind of tricky. Um, so best approach uh, when you go or when you become backgrounded, you want to signal the remote participant to update their UI so they can kind of see that you're on hold and, and that you're not like just frozen and, and you know, you've been disconnected or something. Um, it can also happen that you know, when, you, when you're backgrounded, uh, that your audio and video tracks are paused, uh, the, the, the ones from the remote participant. So uh, you want to monitor the playback state. Um, to be safe, you, you should release the camera when backgrounded and reacquire it when foregrounded. You know, that will just guarantee that you have the camera when you return. Um, on the microphone, it's a little trickier uh, because you, you want to you wanna keep the microphone open when you go backgrounded. You know, maybe you're your mom is asking for the phone number of your uncle, and then you you know you go you look up the contacts, and you still want to be able to talk. Um, so then, you know, we have found that um, there are times where you may want to reacquire the the microphone, uh, and that these are the three cases, right? So media stream track transitioned to the ended state uh, while backgrounded. Uh, the media stream track did not did not unmute on being foregrounded. Or the media stream track unmuted, but then emits silence. Right, and <laughs> it's a lot, a lot of stuff to check for. Yeah, you know, it, but I have some little bit of detail on the detecting okay. the silence. Um, so some pseudocode. So in, in general, we use the the analyzer node or a analyzer node, uh, and then we just get the raw samples. And then if you see like a continuous stream of, of one twenty eight or or zero. Um, then, you know, it's pretty much flatlined okay. and, and you want to go reacquire. Uh, so yes, maybe yeah. check for like, I don't know, 200, 300 milliseconds and see what's going on. Okay. Yeah. So you pipe, you pipe that over to, to web audio to, 
to do the checks, you know, similar, I guess, to like volume, you know, volume level, that sort of thing. Exactly. Exactly. That's it. Uh, okay. So then, um, you know, another best practice is just testing the the beta versions of the operating systems and browsers. You know, just see if there's regression, see if you have any problems. Um, you know, with video codecs, your mileage will vary with, with H.264. Um, works great on some devices, not so good on other devices. Um, you know, you you could just go with VP8 for everything uh, except for the Pixel 3. So the, the best solution is kind of where you um, you use the best codec for the best device. Uh, uh, but that requires a bit of work. You, you saw some specific issues on the Pixel 3? I guess is why you call that out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then we, we advise customers to use H.264 on the Pixel 3. Oh, OK. Um, next one is just decide what, what browsers to support. So it kind of depends on whether your customers expect everything to be working all the time or whether you know the, the service you offer is free and you're trying to get the widest reach of, of users. Uh, so for the widest reach, just you know, test that the WebRTC APIs are available uh, and working. Uh, and then just a little bit on web views. Uh, so we encounter web views mostly in, in email applications. So the, the email like has a, a link to a video chat uh, and then you know, people click on the link. Uh, but you know, within, let's say, Gmail, it'll open up in, in the web view um, within the application. Um, also, for, for non-Safari browsers on iOS, that they use the Safari web view. Yeah. So on Android, you know, it's been there forever um, and, and it, it works very well. Um, on iOS, you know, there was no support from iOS 11 onwards, uh, but, you know, thanks to the Apple team, uh, iOS 14.3 has it. Um, last I checked, it was maybe around 70% of, of devices on 14.3 or 14.4. So, you know, we're, we're almost there on that yes, one as that's well. that's not too bad. Yeah. I uh, just want to introduce quickly a, a, an RTC Diagnostics SDK that, that we wrote and is available on GitHub. Uh, it's it's completely generic. It doesn't rely on, on the Twilio platform at all. And it has some of the best practices I've been talking about. Uh, so input audio device tests, input video device tests, output audio device tests. Um, there is some uh, network tests as well, but you'll have to bring your own turn server for that. Okay. Yeah, so but the developers out there can uh, cut and paste this freely, I guess, or yeah, they can fork. except for the, uh, the turn server part? Exactly. Yeah, they can fork the repo, you know, do whatever they want to do. So it'll hopefully get you get you started. Uh, so then some final thoughts. Um, mobile browsers are a low friction way to engage users in video chat. Uh, we, we have seen customers move to this from, from dedicated applications. Um, there are some challenges related to mobile browsers, but you know they can be overcome. So what you need to do is verify that the input and output devices are, are working correctly. Uh, handle background and foregrounded events, right? So that's the tricky part. Um, stay on top of the uh, operating system and browser updates. If you see issues, report them. You know, the more people that report issues, the, the higher the likelihood that they will get fixed. Um, and then, you know, decide what browsers you, you actually want to support and, and, and tell your users what your supported list is. So thank you very much. Um, you know, and, and as always, we, we can't wait to see what you build. All right. Thanks, Donald. Cranky Geek is possible thanks to Google, as well as industry sponsors. Twilio, create real-time video apps that scale as you grow, from free one-to-one -one chats to larger group rooms. Ring Central, revolutionize your business communications with Ring Central APIs. Agora, embed vivid voice and video in any application, on any device, anywhere. Dolby, the API platform for transforming media and communications. Element. Talk to everyone through the open global matrix network, protected by proper end-to-end -end encryption.